Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Great to see you. It's really good to see you. <laughs> okay, good evening. Okay, let's begin. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Just right there. And I'm, I'm going to call the attendance list. So um, as usual, if you when you hear your name, please let me know you're here. <clears throat> let's begin. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Present teacher. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Racinos. Present teacher. Thank you. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here, teacher. Thank you. Selina Yvette Gutierrez Osorio. Selina Yvette Gutierrez Osorio. Denis Isaías Gómez Rodas. Good evening, present. Good evening. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Eric Ernesto Linares. We have a chat entry right here. Selena says present. Okay, thank you, Selena. Okay. Um, Erika Maidel Antonio Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzman. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Iris Regina Hernandez Cuellar. It's here, teacher. Thank you. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Jose Raivin Enriquez. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Present teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Present teacher. Thank you. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla Tejada. Present teacher. Thank you. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Ronald Antonio Luna López. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. We have a chat entry here. And Ayanira says, good evening. Okay. Ayanira, thank you. All right. Just calling names one more time in case uh, you joined the meeting a little bit late. Carla Marisol Vargas Esteves. I'm sorry, Blanca Marisol. I said Carla. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Okay, teacher present. Thank you. Okay. And uh, that's just Saul Antonio Hernandez Torres. Are you here, Saul? The musician? Okay, thank you. One of the two musicians. Okay. All right. Um, everybody, thank you. And um, let's begin. I'm just going to share this with you. Yeah, right there. Can you see the screen I'm sharing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you very much. So everybody, welcome. This is Inglés Pre Avanzado, Modulo 1, and that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. This is session 11, and today is March the 15th of 2023 or 2023, whichever you prefer. We're going to begin. So uh, first thing we're going to do today, we're going to have um, three exercises 
as a review of the use of past continuous and past simple. Okay, so it's the same that we studied yesterday, that we began uh, the day before yesterday, and yesterday we had a review. And today we're just going to do some practice. So I'm not going to go over the whole explanation again because it's a very long explanation. So uh, we're going to do the exercises directly. Okay, let's do this. Um, you have first exercise. the first exercise. Join each sentence in column A with an appropriate sentence in column B. Use as, when, or while to join the sentences. So um, what are we going to do here? I just want you to join the two parts of the sentence. The first part is in column A. The second part of the sentence is in column B. So it's a matching exercise, right? You just need to connect one with the other. You have an example. I was crossing the road, okay? The other ones are, I was using my computer. We were playing tennis. I was taking a shower. I was cooking dinner. The second part of the sentences, the second parts of the sentences are, my racket broke. A car nearly hit me. The water went cold. I burned my finger. Uh, it suddenly stopped working. So what are we going to do? Well, let's take the example. As I was crossing the road, this is the first one, a car nearly hit me. So here. So basically they connected the first uh, entry in the first column with the second entry in the second column. But of course, it's not just a copy paste exercise. You have to use the correct word. Like as I was crossing the road, a car nearly hit me. You can also say while I was crossing the road, a car nearly hit me. And if you want to change the order of the, of the clauses, you can say a car nearly hit me uh, while I was crossing the road. Okay or as I was crossing the road. So it's really up to you. What about number two? Who wants to try number two? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Nadia and Solina, let's do it. And then Boris and then Maritza. Keep your hands up, yeah. please. Okay. Um, I was using my computer. Uh, I I burned my fingers. Let's see. As I was using my computer, I burned my finger. I think it's possible, but very unlikely. <laughs> okay, grammatically correct. Okay, but the the possibilities for that to happen are like very 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 low. But, but okay, well, thank you for your participation, Nadia. Uh, maybe a different version of the same sentence. Maritza, do you have it? The second teacher? Or... Uh -huh, the second one, yeah. please. Yeah, the second one. I was using my computer. It suddenly stopped working. Okay, good. Just remember that you have to use a special word at the beginning, like as I was using my computer or while I was using my computer it suddenly stopped working. Okay, so this these words are important. Okay, so while I was using my computer, it suddenly stopped working. Or as I was using my computer, it suddenly stopped working. Okay, thank you very much. Maritza, you get number three, please. Number three? Mm -hmm. Number three. Wild. Oh, wait, 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 wild? Uh, wild. wait. Uh, Just, just one question, Maritza. Did you tell me the previous one? What? Uh, fue usted quien me participó en la anterior, o no? <laughs> me perdí yes, un poquito. Yes, okay. I was yes, you. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, we're going to give a chance to someone else, but thank you very much. <laughs> Jose, okay, this is Jose's turn. But thank you, thank you. Uh, while we were playing tennis, my racket broke. While we were playing tennis, my racket broke. Yeah, that is correct. Teacher, thank you. Can, yes. I, can I say we were playing tennis when my racket broke absolutely or it's not correct it is correct it's okay you can say, yes yes you can say we were playing tennis when my racket broke perfect okay thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome okay uh daisy you get number four while i was taking a shower the water went cold uh while i was taking a shower uh, the water went cold okay Oops, I nearly showed you the other answer. Okay, so yeah, that is correct. Okay, 
Uh, just a moment. Okay. So while I was taking a shower, the water went cold. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you, Daisy. And Alejandro, you have number five, please. This one's yours. I was cooking dinner when I burned my finger. You can say that I was cooking dinner when I burned my finger. The answer that I have here is, while I was cooking dinner, I burned my finger. But your answer is correct. Okay, that's another way of saying it. Okay, so very good. Why I was... Yeah, but what you told me is also good. You can say, I was cooking dinner when I burned my finger. Correct. Okay, that's another way of saying it. Very good. Uh, I just didn't include it because I didn't have enough space, but maybe I should. Maybe I'm going to modify this presentation so I can include more than one possible answer. Okay, everybody, thank you for your participation. Th that's exercise number one. We're going to solve exercise number two now before we go into the new grammar topic. So complete the, these conversations, use the past tense, that is past simple, or the past continuous of, of the verbs given. So um, there's it's a conversation. Letter A says, I'm sorry I'm late, Kathy. I was at the dentist and then Kathy says, don't tell me while you were sitting because you have sit in parentheses, so uh, they're using the past continuous. When you were sitting in the waiting room, you blah, blah, blah. So um, here's the thing. I want you to, to do this. It would be good if I had two volunteers so that one can read A and another can read B. So who wants to participate? I need two volunteers right here. Past simple versus past continuous. Mm-hmm. Who would like to try? Jose Raving is one. I need another volunteer. Boris. Okay, so Jose, you can go do letter A, I'm sorry, and Boris, letter B, please. Or let's say, no, Boris, I want you to do letter A. Okay, read, read part A and, and Jose part B, please. So Boris, you begin, please. You can start the conversation. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm so late. Kari, I was at the dentist. Don't tell me. While you were sitting in the waiting room, you meet someone interesting. I know how you are. I know how you are, Tom. Okay, before we continue, what is the past of meet? Met. Met. Uh -huh, that's right. You met someone interesting. I know how you are, Tom. And then, Boris? Well, you're wrong that this time. The dentist was cleaning my teeth when she suddenly got called. Got called away for an emergency. So I just sat there waiting for two hours <laughs> with my mouth hanging up. Yeah. <laughs> What a story. Okay, thank you. So, well, you're wrong this time. The dentist was cleaning my teeth when she suddenly got called away for an emergency. So I just sat there waiting for two hours with my mouth hanging open like this. Like, okay, two hours like that. Sounds sounds exhausting. Okay, um, thank you. Okay, I need two more volunteers for the second conversation. Who wants to try? Different people this time, okay? Who wants to give it a try? Maritza, okay, and I need another person, please. Alejandro, okay. All right, so uh, Maritza, you can begin and, ah, but there's a problem right here because it's it's, it's the same person who, who does this. Okay, we're gonna do something. I'm going to be B, okay, uh, Maritza, you can do the first part, letter A. So Maritza basically gets all this part. I will read B and then Alejandro gets the second part, okay? So um, let's begin, Maritza, please. Okay. Yes, what happened to me last night? 
as I get, I so, got into bed. Okay, sounds like an activity in progress. As I have, mm -hmm. I was, I was, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was getting into, I was getting into bed. Mm -hmm. I heard. I love no like a uh, teacher. Sorry, <laughs> I so don't see. Very oh, you well. can see. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I heard a loud noise like a gunshot in the street. A loud noise, noise like a gunshot in the street. Mm -hmm. Then the phone ran. The phone then rang. The phone Mm -hmm. Who was it? Okay, Alejandro, you get to continue. Okay, it was Mariana. She always called me late at night, but this time she had a reason. She was driving right past my apartment when she got a flat tire. It was very late, so while we were changing the tire, I invited her to spend the night. Correct. Okay, yeah. So the conversation goes like this. Guess what happened to me last night? As I was getting into bed, I heard the loud noise like a gunshot okay, in the street. Then the phone rang. The other person says, who was it? It was Mariana. She always calls me late at night, but this time she had a reason. She was driving right past my apartment when she got a flat tire. It was very late. So while we were changing the tire, I invited her to spend the night. So that's the story. So um, thank you for your participation, everybody. Those are the three exercises that I have prepared for you as a review for the past simple versus the past continuous. So um, we're going to stop with that uh, topic and now we're going to continue with past perfect, okay? Which is uh, something else. Um, let's go on. Lesson objective. We started this yesterday, if you remember, by the end of this lesson, you will learn to use the past perfect tense. So how does this work? Take a look. So there's a conversation, same thing that we read yesterday. So listen and practice. Brian says, someone stole my wallet last night. And Kathy says, oh no, what happened? Well, I was working out and I had put my stuff in my locker. Okay, so um, give me a second. I have to stop sharing the screen just for a moment. Oops. Just give me a second. Okay, I'm back. We're going to share the screen with you again. So there it is. Okay, um can you see the screen I'm sharing again? Okay, yes, teacher. Okay, so thank you. I had put my stuff in my locker. Okay, so we have this. I had put my stuff in my locker. Okay. Then uh, I had put my stuff in my locker just like I was do. When I came back, someone had stolen my wallet. Okay, so when I came back, someone had stolen my wallet. Okay. I guess I had forgotten to lock the locker. Okay, so I guess I had forgotten to lock the locker. So Kathy says, that's terrible. Did you lose much money? Brian says, only about $15, but I lost my credit card and my driver's license. What a pain. So uh, you have this conversation right here and I want you to take a look at this. We have had put, had put I'm sorry. And we're going to put it here. Had put. Then in the second sentence, you say, when I came back, someone uh, had stolen my wallet. Okay, so that's the other one, had stolen. And finally, you have, I guess I had forgotten to lock the locker. Okay, this is what we call the past perfect. Okay, so how does it work? Basically, you have to use have for all subjects, okay? And after that, you have to use a verb in past participle. 
had and a verb in past participle. And also you can use a contracted form, apostrophe D and a verb in past participle. So how does it work? This is just like a very simple explanation, but now we're going to get into details. Grammar focus, okay, past perfect. This is the information that you will find in the, in the manual, okay, and uh, in the platform. So let's take a look. This is uh, section 4.9, which is past perfect positive and negative statements. So you use the past perfect for an event that occurred before another event or time period in the past. Sounds confusing, but don't worry. We're going to explain this in more detail. So you have a past event. I was working out, and before that, before that moment, uh, and I had put my, my stuff in my locker. So that means that I put the stuff in the locker before I started working out. <clears throat> so second example, when I came back, okay, someone had stolen my wallet. That means that this happened before I came back. Someone has stolen my wallet. There's a chat entry. Uh, okay, Maritza just sent me a message. Okay, Maritza, I... I, I read you. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Um, so uh, the next one, right? So uh, they were able to steal it because I had forgotten to lock the, the locker. Now, this may be a little bit confusing right now, especially because, you know, the material is usually very uh, brief when it comes to grammar explanations. So we're going to expand on it here. The, the next slide is not in... The manual so um, pay close attention this is past perfect okay past perfect right there so we have to study this example situation you have at 10 30 and at 11 okay two things happen so paul this was a party so paul said bye okay 10 30 and then sarah arrived at 11 30 minutes later okay and they said hi so um let's read this sarah and paul went to the same party last week, but they didn't see each other. Why not? Paul left the party at 10.30 and Sarah arrived at 11 o'clock. So that means that first Paul left, 30 minutes passed, and after that, Sarah arrived. So when Sarah arrived at the party, Paul wasn't there. Why? Because he had gone home. This is past perfect. He had gone home. Had gone is the past perfect. Now, what about the past perfect right here? Uh, because it's the past, okay, it uses the same form for all subjects. It's I, we, they, you, he, she, and it. They use the auxiliary have or the contracted form apostrophe D. And after that, you have to use a verb in past participle. So the past participles of the verbs. Remember that when a verb is regular, the past participle is the same as the past form. Okay, for example, invite, the past is invited. The past participle is also invited. Okay, um, finish, the past is finished. The past participle is also finished. So it's the same as the past form, the same spelling. But when it is um, an irregular verb, okay, then you need to memorize it. You know the story, okay? You need to memorize it. You need to go check the list. And uh, you have, for example, the uh, gone, gone is the past participle of the verb go. Seen is the past participle of the verb see. Finished is the past participle of finished, but that's a regular verb. So again, the past perfect simple is had plus the past participle. Gone, seen, finished, etc. So how do we use it? Uh, pay close attention to this. Sometimes we talk about something that happened in the past. Okay. Sarah arrived at the party. Past simple for complete actions in the past. Okay. We, we know this. We have been practicing this. So this is not new to us. This is the starting point of the story. Okay. Then if we want to talk about things that happened before this time, then we use the past perfect. Okay. For example, when Sarah arrived at the party, Paul had already gone home. My question is, you have two actions. Sarah arrived, Paul went home. Which one happened first? Who knows the answer? Jose. 
the first section is that Paul has already had already gone home. Correct. Okay, Paul had already gone home. Uh, the past perfect indicates that out of the two actions, this one occurred first. That's the idea. So when Sarah arrived at the party, Paul had already gone home. So cuando Sarah llegó a la fiesta, Paul ya se había ido. La que fue antes que ya llegara. So this action happened before the other action. That's the idea. Past perfect. But don't worry. There is more. This is a more graphic explanation of it. But here we're going to compare present perfect and past perfect. So compare the present perfect, like have seen, etc., and the past perfect, had seen, etc. You use present perfect uh, when we talk about an event that happened before now. We use past perfect when we talk about an event that happened before a specific moment in the past. You have some examples. Who is that woman? I have seen her before. I think I should. Just give me a second. I'm just going to, uh, oops. Sorry, uh, here. Sorry that I sometimes make mistakes uh, using this, but um, at work, I usually use it in English and here my computer is in Spanish, so I get the wrong keys. Just give me a second. She's just trying to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Just a moment. Okay, the last one. Okay, so here we go. So who is that woman? I have seen her before, but I can't remember where. That means I have seen her before this moment. At some point in my life, I have seen this woman before. But what about past perfect? I wasn't sure who she was. I had seen her before, but I couldn't remember where. This person is speaking in the present, but he is remembering a moment in the past. This is the moment in the past. And before that moment in the past, she had seen this woman. So the difference between present perfect and past perfect is the starting point. In present perfect, the starting point is right now. I have seen her before. I have seen her before this moment. But past perfect is I had seen her before. That is not before now. It's before a specific moment in the past. So second example, we aren't hungry. We have just had lunch. That means we had lunch before this moment. Past perfect. We weren't hungry in that moment. We had just had lunch. No teníamos hambre. Acabábamos de almorzar. O habíamos almorzado recientemente. So the action indicates that uh, lunch occurred before that moment in which they were not hungry. Uh, the next one, the house is dirty. They haven't cleaned it for weeks. They haven't done this activity before now. But the second example, using past perfect, the house was dirty in that moment, in the past. They hadn't cleaned it for weeks. O sea, no la habían limpiado en semanas, antes de ese momento. Okay, so you have to be very careful with this because, again, past perfect indicates that an action occurred before another one or that it occurred before a specific moment in the past. More on that right here. May sound a little bit confusing, but it's not. Let's take a look. Boris. Sure. Yes. Uh, I can see in this statement that... Uh... When we use uh, the present perfect, we use the verb to be in present. Um, uh -huh. When when we uh, use the past perfect, it's in, in past. Exactly. Um, that is the difference when we try to um, choose the, the statement. Okay. Uh, the difference is this. Uh, you Your observation is very good, by the way. You say the house is dirty. It's the verb being present because this is the starting point. And the starting point is the present right now. This is for present perfect. The starting point is right here. So when you talk about things that happened before now, you can use present perfect. They haven't cleaned it for weeks. But in the other statement, okay, the house was dirty. This is the starting point now. You're talking about it right now, but the starting point is not now. It's a moment in the past. That's why the verb is in the past. 
And when you talk about the things that happened before that moment, you use past perfect. They hadn't cleaned it for weeks. No es lo mismo decir, como en español, no han limpiado la casa en varias semanas que no habían limpiado la casa en varias semanas. Una cosa indica que eso ya pasó, fue antes de un momento específico en el pasado. Ok, Alejandro Quintanilla. Please, teacher, it's, it's okay if I think that uh, the, the, the main difference between present perfect and past perfect is uh, the pair have in present for the present perfect and mm -hmm. the pair have in past for the that past is correct. Perfect. That's the difference in structure. That's the but, difference in structure, uh, but but it's not the difference in use. But your observation is very good, by the way. Okay, so yeah, present perfect, you have to use have or has. Sometimes you have to use has if the subject is he, she, or it. But in past perfect, the auxiliary is had for all subjects. I, you, oh, he, she, it, we, or they. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, so... Um, but that's present perfect versus past perfect. Let's take a look at this, which is probably more important right now. Past simple versus past perfect. This is when uh, this is where I want really want you to uh, pay uh, the closest attention. So compare the past simple, like left, was, etc., and the past perfect had left, had been, etc. You have uh, some example conversations. Was Tom there when you arrived? Yes, but he left soon afterwards. So you have two actions. One, you arrived. And the second one, Tom left. My question is, which one happened first? Who knows the answer? Again, the conversation goes like this. Was Tom there when you arrived? The party, for example? Yes, but he left soon afterwards. So you have two actions. Action number one, you arrived. Action number two, Tom left. My question is, of these two actions, which one happened first? Jose. That he arrived Correct. That's this person third, arrived. Yes. That's the first action. That's correct. He arrived. After that, Tom left. Let's take a look at this, uh, the conversation on the right. Was Tom there when you arrived? No, he had already left. Now, you have two actions again. You arrived and Tom left. In this case, which one happened first? Boris. Well, uh, in this case, he uh, he had already get, uh, left. Correct. Okay. Past perfect indicates that this action happened before the other. Ya se había ido. O sea, que se fue antes que llegar. So, that's correct. Very good. So, past perfect indicates that this action occurred first. Second example, or second set of examples. Kate wasn't at home when I phoned. She was at her mother's house. Okay. Kate had just got home when I phoned. She had been at her mother's house. Because of the time, we're going to move on because it's already 8.34 and we need to do some exercises. Let's take a look. When we got home last night, we found that somebody had broken into the flat. Why is it flat? I'm going to change this. It's just apartment. Flat is British English, okay? Let's do this in American English. So when we got home last night, we found that somebody had broken into the apartment. So you have two actions. You got home, somebody broke into the apartment, a thief, okay? So which action happened first? Alejandro. I think that uh, the first act action is somebody had broken the, into the apartment. 
That is correct. Okay. Somebody and has when broken. People, when, uh, when people arrive to the department, uh, find or found the, I don't know what thing broken. The mess. Things. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. That is correct. That is correct. Thank you, Alejandro. Yeah, you have this. Uh, when I when we got home last night, we found out that somebody had broken into the apartment. Okay, had broken is in past perfect, indicating that this action occurred first, and then after that we got home. Okay, that's the idea. Second one, Karen didn't come to the cinema with us. She had already seen the movie. So, two things here. One action is that she didn't come to the cinema with us. And the second one is she had already seen the movie. Of these two actions, which one happened first? Boris says she had already seen the movie. Correct. Past perfect indicates that this action occurred first. That's why she didn't want to come to the movie. She said, like, what movie are you going to watch? Avatar 2? Ah, no. I saw it last week. You go. You go. <laughs> okay. So she didn't want to go because she had already seen the movie. Okay, that's the idea. Um, next example. At first, I thought I had done the right thing, but I soon realized that I had made a mistake. The people sitting next to me on the plane were nervous. They hadn't flown before. Okay. Now, um, just to exemplify this in a better way, you can use, um, I'm going to express two sentences, or I'm going to uh, write two sentences right here. Take a look. When I got home, or when I arrived home, when I arrived, okay, mom made dinner. And we have a second sentence. When I arrived, mom had made dinner. You have two sentences right here. They are similar, but the meanings are very different. So when I say, when I arrived, mom made dinner. You have two actions here. The first one is, I arrived. The second one is, mom made dinner. So my question is, which one happened first? Dennis. The second. Uh, the second, well, I don't know. <laughs> So in the in the first sentence, that's that's what I mean. In the first sentence, we have two actions. One, I arrived. The other one, mom made dinner. So uh, Dennis, um, which of these two occurred first? When I arrived, I guess. Okay, yeah, that is correct. Okay, so that means first, I arrived. After that, mom made dinner. Okay. That's the idea. But what about the second sentence? When I arrived, mom had made dinner. Saul. Ah, oh, no, sorry. Maritza wanted to participate. Sorry. Uh, Maritza, she, she raised her hand first. So my question, Maritza, we have two actions here. I arrived and mom had made dinner. Which one occurred first? The first mom had made Dinner. That is correct. Okay, this means that first mom made dinner. After that, I arrived. When I arrived. Okay, I arrived. that's right. Okay, so again, past perfect indicates that this action happened first. That's the idea. Okay, always remember the structure. You have to use had, that's the auxiliary. If it's negative, you use hadn't. And then the verb in past participle, not past simple, past participle. That's the idea. So um, 8.39, it's almost 8.40. Wow, time flies. We're going to do a few exercises to practice this. And you have this, your turn. I apologize about the... Uh, the small font size, but that was the only way to fit the whole exercise into one slide. So uh, read the situations and write sentences using the words in parentheses. So there are two examples. There was a picture lying on the floor. And in parentheses, you have it fall off the wall. Why was it there? Because before I saw it, it had fallen off the wall. Se había caído. Okay. It had fallen off the wall. 
So uh, the second one, the people sitting next to you on the plane were nervous. It was their first flight. So you have in parentheses, they not fly before. Before that moment, before that moment, they hadn't flown before. That's the idea. What about number three? You went back to your hometown recently after many years. It wasn't the same as before. And you have it change a lot. Who wants to try? You have to use past perfect, remember. Jose Raivin. It had changed a lot. It had changed a lot. Okay, that is correct. Very good. What about number four? Somebody sang a song. You didn't know it. In parentheses, you have I not hear it before. Uh, Alejandro, I don't know if you want to participate or if your hand is just up. Ahí está. <laughs> okay. Se le iba a cansar la manita de tenerla levantada. Okay, so, uh, okay, who wants to try this one, please? Somebody sang a song, you didn't know it. Saul. Uh, maybe the correct answer is I hadn't heard it before. Okay, but what's the past participle of here? Heard. Heard. Okay, so I hadn't heard it before. Mm -hmm. That's correct. No la había escuchado antes. I hadn't heard it before. Very good. Thank you very much. What about number five? I invited Rachel to the party, but she couldn't come. In parentheses, you have she arranged to do something else. Who wants to try? Boris. Well, I think that uh, I invited Rachel to the party, but she couldn't come. Mm -hmm. uh, she hadn't arranged to do something else. Um, actually, it's an affirmative sentence. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. She had arranged. She had arranged. She had arranged. Mm -hmm. to do something else. She had arranged, or she had arranged, she if you want to contract it, okay, to do something else. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ya había quedado o ya tenía planes de hacer otra cosa. She had arranged to do something else. Thank you, Boris. Number six. You went to the cinema last night. You got to the movie theater late. The movie already start. That's in parentheses. Who wants to try? Raise your hand, please. Katia. Okay, teacher, I try. Okay. The movie had started already? You can say the movie had started already. That is good, okay? Although normally the adverb is used between the auxiliary and the main verb, but your version is also okay. So the film had already started, but you can also say the film had started already. Both are acceptable. Okay. Mm -hmm. But your, your version okay. is also acceptable. So yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, very good. Number seven. Last year we went to Mexico. It was our first time there, and we not be there before. Nadia. Teacher, <clears throat> I have a question about uh, yes. the the exercise number six. Okay. Um, I don't understand the the already already started. Okay. Why? The second word started mm -hmm. is, is um, uh, I say, I'm el verbo. It's in past participle. Es, uh, el segundo, el segundo. Ah, okay, because already is an is um it's an adverb. Already it's like when you say in Spanish, ya. <laughs> so you say the film had already started. That will be something like La película ya había empezado. So that's the meaning of already. So the structure is the film had started. We're going to take this out. The film had started. If you add already, you put it between the auxiliary and the main verb. 
En Meaning, la película ya había empezado. Uh -huh. But the structure remains. The film had started. You're just adding, you're just adding the word already in between. Okay, thanks. And I'm trying to answer sentence number seven. Okay. And okay. last year we went to Mexico. It was our first time there. Mm -hmm. We ha we hadn't be there before. No. Uh -huh. we, we hadn't. What? Was is the past form of the verb be, but not the past participle. Um, no, I don't know. Okay, no problem. Don't worry. Uh, who can help us here? Dennis. We hadn't been there before. We hadn't been there before. Okay, yeah. The past participle of the verb be is been. So we hadn't been, we hadn't been there before. Well, I got stuck for a second right there. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Number eight, uh, Dennis. Just a question. Uh, sure. The uh, the right pronunciation uh, is being ben or been or, or been. Uh, depends. Okay, there are some regions in which they pronounce it been, and some other places they pronounce it been. I once uh, had the same question for an American girl that, that I met a long time ago. And I asked her, well, do you pronounce Ben or do you pronounce Ben? And she told me, normally you will pronounce Ben. Mm -hmm. But some people say Ben. Okay. So, yeah, we hadn't been there before. Number eight. I met Daniel last week. It was good to see him again after such a long time. So you have I not see him for five years. Who wants to try? Maritza. I met Daniel last week. It was good to see him again after such a long time. I have not seen him for five years. Good. You can contract it also and say, I hadn't seen him for five years. Correct. Okay. Very good. No lo había visto en cinco años, right? Thank you very much, Maritza. Um, what about number nine? Okay. Number nine. Uh, I offered my friends something to eat, but they weren't hungry. They just have lunch. So just is an adverse. So remember, if you use just, you have to put it between uh, the auxiliary and the main verb. So who wants to try this one? wants to give it a try. Ya está, ahora ya no quiere el hamster en la cabeza de uno. Ya he cansado. Ok, Katia. Oh, ok, teacher. <laughs> oh. Ya sé que me va a salir mala, pero... No, they no, 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 no sea tan pesimista. Ajá, ajá. They, they hadn't just... Hadn't... hadn't okay, one oh, thing, no, one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. It's not negative. It's an affirmative sentence. So you say they... Have. They had, uh -huh. They had... I don't know. <laughs> so, no, no, no problem. No problem. Okay, remember. Okay, so um, we have a chat entry here before that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so me. they have. Okay, they have. And after that, you need to use the adverb. They have. Just. They have just. And after that, the main verb in past participle. Had. Uh huh. Lunch. Had lunch. They had just had lunch. Acababan de almorzar. So they had just had lunch. O recién habían almorzado. Okay, good. They had just had lunch. There you go. Very good. Thank you, teacher. 
You're welcome. Alejandro, do you want to take number 10? Sam played tennis yesterday. He wasn't very good at it because it was his first game ever. So? He had never played before. Played before. Uh-huh. He had never played before or he had never played before. Okay, that is correct. Now, something that I wanted to say here is this, apostrophe D. And I think I explained this a few days ago. I guess it was on the first week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the apostrophe D. Apostrophe D is the short form of had, but it's also the short form of would. So how do we know the difference? Okay, well, the thing is that had is followed by a verb, in past participle. And would is followed by a verb in base form. So that means that every time you have something like this, imagine um, if I say I've gone, okay. No, oh, sorry. Yeah, I've gone and then I've go. Two different things. What do we have here? Is this have or would? Had. It is have. How do you know? Because after that, you have a verb in past participle. And this one is? Would. It's would. Correct. Because after that, you have a verb in base form. That's how you recognize them. Mm hmm that's the idea. So if you get confused right there, you get, oh my God, is this had or would? Or just take a look at the next verb. If it's in past participle, ah, it's had. If it's in base form, ah, it's would. Okay, Boris. Sure, what happened when I use could? Uh, could is like, the thing is, um, could in this context, okay, is like a combination of the modal auxiliary can plus the modal auxiliary will, okay? And because we cannot use two modal auxiliaries together, okay, we use could. That's how you use it. It's like the fusion of the two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you never say I can, would, or I would, can, okay? No, th that's incorrect, okay? So instead you say could. Nadia. Mm-hmm. Um, teacher, can you repeat what they say? I with a have on a wood with when 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 the, we the difference. use and what when, when we use as apostrophe. Ah, how, uh, how do you say the pronunciation? Yes, the pronunciation. Ah, ah, the pronunciation. You say I'd. I've gone. I'd go. Mm -hmm. So it's like I and D is I'd. I'd. It's a pronunciation right there. I normally don't do it like this because it's it's a little bit difficult to hear. Uh, so I prefer to, you know, say the complete forms. That way I avoid misunderstandings and I'm I make sure that people understand what I'm saying. Alejandro. I think, teacher, I think that maybe uh, Boris uh, want to ask about if we have to use apostrophe with could and, ah. in, and if, if, if we have to use or if we can to use apostrophe with could, uh, how, how are we going to right. uh, recognize? Ah, okay. So I'm sorry I didn't understand the question. Um, I'm sorry I didn't understand the question before. No. Okay. Could does not have a short form. It's not possible to use it like that. If you want to use could, you have to use the full form of it. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. So no, no short form for could. Mm -hmm. If you say... It's complete feature, like shoot too. Uh huh. Exactly. Just like should, should doesn't have a contracted form. Could doesn't have a contracted form either. Mm -hmm. I could do it. Yeah. Say, yo, yo podría hacerlo. Okay. So that's the only way of expressing this. You cannot contract it. Okay. Again, I'm sorry I didn't understand the question initially. And and also Alejandro, thank you for for clarifying it. Okay. No, 
All right. Um, what time is it? 8.55. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, I have this exercise, but I'm sure this exercise is going to take more than five minutes. Um, we're going to do it tomorrow. Okay. But but instead, I'm just going to go over the explanation again, just to, just to make sure uh, everybody understands. So again, very quickly. Okay. We have only five minutes. Again, uh, remember the past perfect simple is had plus the past participle. Okay, that's the thing. And also, very important, you use the same auxiliary verb had with all the subjects. Yep. In the case of past perfect, there is no uh, special form for he, she, or it. Okay, you say I had, he had, we had, they had, you had, she had, it had. It's the same for all subjects. Okay, and after that, you have to use the verb in past participle. Always remember, study your list of irregular verbs. It's very, very important that you know that list. Nadia. When we use a uh, will, uh, it's the similar we can, it's an old pronoun. Ah, uh, yeah, Before okay. Will is, will is a different idea because will is a modal auxiliary verb. Modal auxiliaries don't have special forms for he, she, it. Okay, so you can say, I would, she would. It's the same. You never say she woulds. No, that would be a mistake. And another thing about the modal auxiliaries is that they are always, always, always followed by a verb in base form. So uh, imagine that I say, um, I will, I don't know what to say here. I will, I will go, okay? You say, she will go. Never say, she will go, so that will be incorrect, okay? So those are two rules about modal auxiliaries. Rule number one is that they don't have a special form for he, she, or it. It's the same for all subjects. And the second one is that the verb that follows is always in base form, okay? Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what the subject is. So I will go, she will go, we will go, they will go, he will go, we will go, etc., etc. That's the thing. But that's would, okay? In this case, we're we're uh, checking out had. But then again, had, okay, is the same for all subjects. After had, uh, you have to use the verb in past participle. Very important, okay? So um, going here, right? The past simple and the past perfect, this is how we use it, okay? Remember that we use the past perfect to indicate that an action occurred before another action or it occurred before a specific moment in the past, okay? So um, imagine that I say, for example, before my seventh birthday, okay, we don't have an action right here. This is only a moment in the past, but it's a specific moment in the past. You can use past perfect after that. I hadn't had a piñada, okay? So that means on my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth birthdays, it was just a celebration. There was a cake. My friends were invited, but no piñatas, okay? Starting on the seventh birthday, okay, then we, we I got a piñata. It's only an example. I'm inventing this. It's not my real life. So um, before my seventh birthday, I hadn't had a piñata, okay? So you don't necessarily have to have two actions, you can have a specific moment in the past and then you can use that, okay? So uh, that's something that we need to know. Antes de mi séptimo cumpleaños, no había tenido una piñata, right? Um, what's next? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the examples. Was Tom there when you arrived? Yes, but he left soon afterwards. This means that uh, you arrived, that happened first, and after that, Tom left. But if you say, was Tom there when you arrived? You say, no, he had already left. That means that he left before you arrived. That's pretty much the difference between using the past simple and then the past simple again and using the past simple and then the past perfect. When you say things using only the past simple, you are telling the story in chronological order. That means you're uh, mentioning the events exactly in the order in which they occurred. 
But when you use past simple and then you use past perfect, past perfect will indicate that that action in particular happened before the other one. So careful right there. That's how we use it. We're about to finish the class. It's 9 p.m. So um, I'm just going to go again over the attendance list and I'm just going to call the one or two names <laughs> that are missing right here. Let's see, Jose, yeah, Alicia, and Filomena, you, you, yeah, everybody's here. Eric Ernesto, Eric Ernesto. I don't, I don't know if Eric, do you know Eric Ernesto and do you have any idea if he's going to continue with the course because he's been absent for several days and I haven't talked to him in a long time, so I have no idea. Um, I'm guessing he will not continue, right? Okay. Oh yeah, he's the only one missing. Okay, okay. Um, all right, uh, just um, some final instructions right here. Um, if you can study this, I'm going to try to send this information to you via WhatsApp right now so you can have it. And um, very important, please review the past participle, the past forms and the past participle forms of irregular verbs. Okay. It's very, very important that you always keep that information in your mind because um, every time you're using a perfect tense, like the past perfect, you use past participles. Okay. Every time it's a past, you have to use the past forms of the verbs. And also you're going to use the uh, past participle forms for other structures like the passive voice, for example, and several other things. Okay. So like the passive causatives. So everybody, please, um, uh, uh, I will always uh, tell you, please study that list. Another thing that I wanted to say is, um, and I'm going to say it in Spanish. Uh, siempre la invitación, siempre, 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 por favor, tratemos de participar, tratemos de participar, porque son, los tengo contados con la mano los que participan siempre, ¿verdad? Y, y hay muchas personas que nada más les escucho la voz cuando me dicen present teacher, yeah. <laughs> Entonces, eh, intentemos participar, ¿verdad? Es, es algo bueno para nosotros, es algo bueno para nosotros, la clase se vuelve más amena, ¿verdad? Escuchamos voces, eh, distintas también y, y todo eso enriquece pues la actividad educativa que estamos llevando a cabo. Entre más nos involucramos, más aprendemos, ¿verdad? Así que la invitación siempre es a, a, a no, digamos, limitarnos nada más a estar observando, a ser un espectador o espectadora, sino también involucrarnos un poquito más. Yo, eh, en particular, a mí no me gusta, digamos, decir, bueno, hoy me va a participar tal persona, porque siento que eso es como obligar a la gente a hablar y eso pues puede que nos no caiga muy bien. Por eso es que hago la invitación abiertamente siempre a que, pues, si no estamos participando en clase, pues, nos animemos, ¿verdad? Y si usted se equivoca, lo peor, pero lo peor, peor que va a pasar es que le voy a corregir respetuosamente, ¿verdad? Usted va a aprender de ese error y, pues, todos los compañeros vamos a aprender, ¿verdad? De paz, ¿verdad? Vi ahí Boris que levantó la mano. You say everything that I'm going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> I took the words right out of your mouth. Okay. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, this class. Thank you for your participation and, and uh, the attendance. And we're going to do some extra. Um, we're going to do some exercises tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you. Bye, Good night, teacher. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.